So good afternoon. Uh, today, the city of West Palm Beach took a big step forward in returning our city's water supply to normal. This morning, in conjunction with the Florida Department of Health and the Florida Department of Environmental Protection, the city of West Palm Beach finally lifted the drinking water advisory for infants, young children under the age of six, and other vulnerable populations in the city of West Palm Beach, the town of Palm Beach, and the town of South Palm Beach, which was first issued on May 28th. Water quality samples collected on June 1st and June 2nd showed cylindrospermopsin, a toxin produced by blue-green algae, uh, in the tap water at levels below the detection level for the Florida Department of Environmental Protection's laboratory. The levels are less than the U.S. Environmental Protection Agency's National Health Advisory level for vulnerable populations. Residents may resume using the tap water for all purposes. Let me repeat, residents may resume using their tap water for all purposes. In just a few moments, uh, Dr. Poonam Kalkat, the City of West Palm Beach Public Utilities Director, will detail specific recommendations for vulnerable populations listed in the advisory as to the steps that they should take for their water systems and small appliances now that we've lifted the advisory. All I can say is that the lifting of this water advisory is great, great news for our city, our utility, and our valued water customers. I want to thank all City of West Palm Beach water customers, first of all, uh, including the Town of Palm Beach and the Town of South Palm Beach for their patience this past week. I know it has been a long week. Again, I apologize for the interruption of service to those under the advisory. We understand that you have trusted us with your safety, your family's safety, and the safety of your business. To us, that is a sacred trust. We value that trust, and we value you. We understand the importance of clean, safe, and reliable drinking water to our customers and to our residents. Your safety is why our utility regularly conducts tests that aren't even required by regulatory agencies. Your safety is why our utility was proactively testing for an emerging toxin for which it is not even required to test by state and federal regulators. Your safety is why we even detected this toxin in the first place and why, after confirming the high-level test late last Thursday, um, after high-level tests late Thursday, we work with the Florida Department of Health to notify the public on Friday. Your safety is why it is so important that we fend off any threats to our water system, whether it's State Road 7 or blue-green algae in Lake Okeechobee and the regional water supply system. I want to underscore that our utility, once it confirmed the presence of the toxin in our drinking water, responded appropriately by following all Florida Department of Health and Environmental Protection Agency guidelines. It is because our utility did the right thing, took immediate action to mitigate the situation, and followed the EPA's 10-day health advisory that, to my knowledge, there are no confirmed cases of illness resulting from the toxin in our community. You know, while it's easy for people to Monday morning quarterback and second-guess decisions, and uh, let me assure you, we will conduct our own internal assessment of how we can improve as an organization. I do want to thank Dr. Callcat and our public utilities department, including the lab scientists, not only for their response during this unprecedented time, but also for all they do to ensure our residents and our customers have safe and reliable water to drink. I have directed staff to establish a panel of experts to determine interim and long-term strategies to ensure this does not occur again. I also want to express my heartfelt thanks to the Florida Department of Health in Palm Beach County, particularly to Dr. Elena Alonzo, uh, who was on, away on vacation, but I was talking to her into the late, uh, uh, even as, as recently as late last evening, as well as the team at the Florida Department of Environmental Protection, who work with the city every step of the way, from public information to the science and data, to lift the advisory and to help us get where we are today. Now, I do have to make one correction. On yesterday, uh, I stated that it was the Department of Environmental Protection uh, that seemed to be slowing down the issuance of, of lifting our advisory. I did learn this morning uh, that it was indeed, um, that that wasn't misinformation. Uh, so I apologize to the hardworking team at uh, DEP, and again, thank you.
We do appreciate all that you do. Now, as we said before, in the state of Florida, there simply is no playbook for handling this particular toxin by utility. We will be sharing our experiences over the last uh, two weeks with the DOH and DEP as they work to develop guidelines for Florida utilities. Given changes to environmental conditions, I predict that this will not be the last time a utility in Florida hears of this toxin. I want our experience in the city uh, this past week to be a force for good. My hope is that our utility and utilities across the state can learn from our experience and that any necessary regulations, if needed, are ultimately implemented. I also wish to extend my heartfelt thanks to Chief Brent Bloomfield and Parks and Recreation Director Leah Rockwell, who were able to establish and operate our water points of distribution on very, very short notice. In seven days, we distributed 335,564 bottles of water. That's 216 pallets. We distributed to nursing homes, assisted living facilities, schools, uh, homebound residents who are over the age of 50, uh, the housing authority, several nonprofit institutions and homeless shelters. It was because of the city employees, the United Way volunteers, and vendors such as Sam's Club that we were able to make these points of distribution possible. You know, when learning of the task at hand on a holiday weekend, uh, our city employees did not bat an eyelid. They leaned into the responsibility, the challenge ahead, and I'm so proud of them. They were there for the city of West Palm Beach organization, our residents, and our businesses when we absolutely needed them most. Chief Bluefield is joining us this afternoon. In just a few mo moments, he will speak about uh, the POD effort. Thank you again, Chief. I also wish to thank again Palm Beach County Sheriff Rick Bradshaw for making his team available to fly our water samples up to Tallahassee for testing. This greatly expedited the return of results. I do also want to thank State Senator Bobby Powell, Palm Beach County Commissioner Mac Bernard, and Palm Beach County Administrator Vidinia Baker, and uh, County Commissioner Greg Weiss as well, who all offered their assistance to the city in our time of need. When I reflect on the past week, it truly took a community to come out on the other side where we find ourselves today. For the West Palm Beach community and our partners, I will be forever grateful. Uh, but please note uh, that we will use uh, this experience uh, as, as, as a, a, a learning experience. Uh, there are lessons to be learned, and um, we want to take advantage of this opportunity uh, now that we have gotten the advisory lifted. Uh, we don't want to just return to business at normal without taking advantage of the opportunity to look at our performance over the past couple of weeks and uh, learn how we can be better, how we can do better. Uh, so at this point, I would like to introduce Dr. Poonam Calcat. Dr. Calcat. Thank you, Mayor. Thank you, everyone. I really appreciate uh, all of you waiting, bearing with us, working with us to make sure that we, we were able to provide you the right in, uh, information at the right time and sometimes uh, that required patience because we needed to make sure we were getting the information from Department of Health, getting their confirmation and approval, as well as uh, DEP. So right now, everyone can resume using the tap water for all users. It is recommended that customers uh, that are of the vulnerable population flush their water uh, faucets for five to 10 minutes to try and get or any water that may have been sitting if it hasn't been used during the advisory to get it out of their plumbing uh, by running all hot water taps as well as cold water taps. Open any remaining fixtures such as hose bibs, external faucets, or fixtures not used for drinking for at least five minutes to finish the plumbing system flushing. Customers in these vulnerable populations should also change water filters, including the ones that are on the refrigerators. If they have any ice makers or water dispensers, throw away all the ice empty and clean any devices or small appliances like vaporizers, humidifiers, CPAP, pet water, coffee makers, or other healthcare devices that may have come into contact with the water during the advisory. And throw out any food, drinks, baby formula, and formulas and medicines that were made with or came into contact with the water during the advisory. Um, I also want to let you know the city will actually 
uh, increase its routine sampling uh, activities for cyanotoxins in the raw water as well as finished water. And we will work very closely with Department of Health as to whatever their recommendations are. And like the mayor said, with the Department of Environmental Protection for any future uh, as to whatever the playbook is given to us and the guidance that's given to us. Uh, I think next is... Frank, please. Okay. Talk to us about the park. <clears throat> Good afternoon. Assistant Fire Chief and Emergency Manager Brent Bloomfield. So I just want to give you a quick update on, on uh, kind of what the mayor already said, but it, we, we did go through 335,564 bottles, 216 pallets, at a cost of $63,493. We also received 14 of those pallets from Palm Beach County uh, DEM, and we're grateful to them for that. Uh, we did distribute to multiple places, uh, non-for-profit organizations, homeless shelters, uh, even the housing authority, we uh, distributed water to them as well. Uh, we are thankful to the mayor, the EM team is thankful to the mayor, city administrator, city administrator uh, the city commissioners, and, and also the city leadership who trust us to, to make things happen and let us uh, do what we have to do to make the city as safe as possible. To kind of give you a quick timeline <clears throat> on Saturday morning, starting at 6 a.m., we started acquiring uh, water through uh, several different locations throughout the city, um, Home Depot, uh, Cheney Brothers, and then we, we ended up at Sam's, and Sam's was a great partner for us. They actually uh, had enough water to sustain us for the first several days through Monday, through the holiday. We didn't have a lot of vendors that were available throughout the holiday, so Sam's was a big part of that. Um, then on, um, on Monday, we decided to uh, spread out our uh, dispensing to other locations. We ended up doing uh, Coleman Park, Phipps Park, as well as Gaines Park. The reason why we choose Gaines Park as a location is because it's a centralized location. It's already an approved pod for uh, after hurricanes, and we already have a MOT plan for that area. We've been asked, uh, you know, on occasion, why did we choose Gaines Park, and that is the biggest reason why, because logistically, it is the best place for us to do a pod in the city. Um, I would like to also extend a special thank you to Sheriff Bradshaw and PBSO Aviation Division. Uh, you know, I was part of that, going over there and, and making sure that we were loading the, the uh, the water samples and taking them up and they were fantastic and, and they did a great job for us. Uh, I want to especially thank the city employees and the United Way because without them we couldn't have made none of this happen. They gave up their Memorial Day weekend to come in and help the city and uh, you know this really does show when we all come together as a city what we can accomplish and we can accomplish great things and I just want everybody to understand that you know we had up to 90 employees this this last weekend over Memorial Day that gave up their weekend so that they could make sure that we got the water out to as many people as possible. So that's, I just want to make a big thank you to them as well. So um, thank you all, and I appreciate it. There is one final thank you I want to make, and that's to uh, the media that's in the room. Uh, without your help, uh, we could not have gotten our message out as broadly as possible. So thank you uh, uh, for helping us uh, to uh, communicate with our public during such a crucial time. And with that, we'll take any questions you may I, have. I have a question for Dr. Pompadour, and, and I probably have a follow-up as well. Dave Bowman, WTTV. Specifically, what have you done that layman, in layman's terms that they might understand to reduce the chances of this happening again? So a couple of things we have taken care of. We, we already monitor all our conveyance canals as well as watershed. We also check upstream of where we get our regional water. So before taking any regional water, we check that on a regular basis too. So we are going to continue doing that. And if we see any kind of algal blooms or algal growth, we immediately isolate that area and treat it so that we don't have any chances of anything coming, this, uh, coming to the plant. Uh, besides that, we have started the eastern well field and the western well field. Which, has, which are groundwater sources that can bring water into the surface water uh, to blend, reduce some of the conduct, uh, increase actually some of the conductivity, decrease the pH, all of those things that help. And groundwater does not have algal uh, growth. Once it comes out and it's in the system, it could obviously based on whatever the conditions are. But that really helps mitigate any uh, activity, bloom activity, if, if that's going on. 
Besides that, we have continued to use powdered activated carbon in our treatment system as needed. So if we see any uh, activity of al algae growing in our, near our intake of the plant, then we go ahead and start adding pack as needed. And we, we can change those doses too. Then we also have what we call post-chlorination after the filtration system. So what that does is there is a contact time with free chlorine before the water goes out into the system, and that will take care of anything that might have made through the filter, filters and through anything, uh, the sedimentation basins and so on and so forth. And last thing that we are doing right now is free chlorine in the distribution system. We will probably start backing off from the free chlorine in the distribution system in the next couple of days, but we'll be monitoring very carefully how our system is doing while we do that. A follow-up to that, obviously you shut off or reduced some of the uh, water from places like Clear Lake, I guess, but and have more groundwater. What kind of supply of well water, groundwater, if you will, do you have? And how long can you really sustain going on that um, before you may have to switch back to the original mix? So we do have, in uh, Clear Lake, we actually started what we call our Australian divide structure pump. So basically what we do there is we get water, pump water from really deeper depths of Clear Lake into the plant intake. And we had actually started that before we even saw uh, this algal toxin come into the plant because we were seeing the conditions of lake dropping, conditions of where you might end up having some kind of al algae growth. So we had started doing that. So we are going to continue doing that. That helps instead of taking water from just the surface of the Clear Lake, it's now coming from the deeper depths. We have two well fields. There are 10 wells on the eastern well field, which is just alongside M Canal, and we have a western well field that are deeper wells, and we have 10 wells there too. We are already throttling back the wells as needed, and we'll continue working with South Florida Water Management District to see how long do we need to do, continue using those wells. We are also, as rain comes down, the rainy, as the rainy season starts, that starts helping bring your uh, surface water up. And when you have that kind of, when you don't have a static system and you don't have standing water and really water going down in these reservoirs, you have less chances of algal blooms. So all of those things will help. Dr. Pal Kavishaw here with WPTV. Um, you know, can you just, I know you mentioned earlier that you did have conversations with the Department of Health to now have more routine testing for this specific toxin. Um, can you explain to our viewers, you know, is that maybe every week as, as opposed to once a month you were doing before, what is that going to look like now? So we are still talking through the details of that. Um, right now we are going to continue. We are doing daily sampling until we get a couple of days of samples where we've already gotten the lift advisory based on two consecutive days. We are looking at one or two more days of where, where we get clear samples so we can go to weekly sampling from there. When we get some, a couple of consecutive weeks of sampling, we can go to bi-weekly and monthly, depending on that. But we will also continue monitoring what we can. We have also bought the lab at the plant, at the water treatment plant, has actually bought some ELISA kits that we are going to buy. ELISA is just one more technique that can be used for looking at these toxins. So we are working through a contract right now to get the training and that, and it, it may be a semi-quantitative quantitative method. It sometimes gives you a little bit higher readings. So we are working with DEP as well as other labs to see what works and continue to talk to the scientists who'd work with this toxin much more than we have and see what they recommend. And like the mayor said, we are going to have an expert panel. We're going to look at all of those things and anything that anybody brings to us, I'm not disregarding anything. I'm going to look at that and I'm going to have our expert panel look at that too and figure out what are the best uh, means and methods for us going forward, short term as well as long term. Mr. Mayor, um, I'm Jay O'Brien, CBS 12 News. If we could ask you, we know that you've got your expert panel, but based upon what you know right now, is there anything you would change in the city's response to this? Well, I'd rather look forward to backwards. Uh, there are lessons learned, and, and, and before you know, I, I throw out a, a very quick uh, response to that, I, I do want to get a team of experts in. Uh, and as I said, I want to take advantage of this opportunity as, uh, for us to learn lessons. So I don't want to give haphazard uh, immediate responses. I think I said yesterday, in terms of my communication, 
Uh, I regret not having spoken directly with the mayors of the town of Palm Beach and of South Palm Beach. Uh, as a matter of fact, today I, I did call them before the advisory was lifted uh, to let them know that that was happening. And uh, to uh, Dr. Poonam's point about the panel of experts, I invited them, if they knew of anyone, any experts, uh, that they felt comfortable with to please bring them to our attention. I want them to feel like they have a seat at the table as well. They're two of our uh, best customers, uh, and so we want to make sure that they feel that they're a part of this. Uh, so th those are some lessons learned for me personally. Uh, also, uh, I could have been more aggressive with getting uh, information out to my commissioners. Uh, so th those are lessons that I've learned personally. But as for the city itself, uh, we will take a, a very close look, uh, not we ourselves, but we'll get an out outside experts in uh, to advise us on best practices uh, and, and how we can move forward. Uh, I'm also giving serious consideration uh, to having uh, an expert to help my administration to look at itself, uh, whether it's communications with agencies, whether it's interdepartmental communication, whether it's communication between, uh, with commissioners, so that we also, so there'll be an external uh, group looking at uh, the, what we're doing with the water system itself, and then another uh, expert, uh, consultant, that will come in and advise me as the mayor uh, and the administration on how we could do a better job uh, and, and become uh, better at what we do. Listen. Uh, life is all about learning, and uh, we hope to be better tomorrow than we are today. Mayor, can, can you clarify what the confusion was uh, yesterday when waiting on the Department of Environmental Protection, and you mentioned today that that wasn't the case. Can you just clarify that for us? Uh, as I understand it, and Poonam, you might want to jump in here. Uh, I was advised yesterday it was the DEP, and as I understand it, it was really the State Department of Health. Uh, so it was a state agency, but it was the Department of Health and not the uh, Department of Environmental Protection. They wanted a third day of a sample, or what exactly? No. No, what, what, what were they looking for, Poon? No, basically, um, they, the State Department, the local county health department had also issued an advisory, a health advisory out, which, which is not usually how these health advisories have worked in the past for us. So when they had issued that, they needed to lift that before we could lift ours. And so we needed to wait for them to get that action done and that they took a little bit of time to look through everything, look through the data before they, they didn't require us to do anything more, but it was just that they were waiting to get some of that data, looking at it more carefully uh, when the state department told them that yes, local county health department can lift that advisory. As soon as they lifted it, within minutes, we were ready to lift our advisory and you might have received both advisories pretty much a couple of minutes apart or so. Steve King, WPBF 25 News. People in the vulnerable populations, if they did drink any of the water, is there a certain amount of water that is considered dangerous for them to have consumed if for some reason they didn't get the message over this last week? The EPA guidelines say that 10 days of advisory, which basically is that the levels that we were seeing, if somebody even in the vulnerable population was consuming that for 10 days, that should not be harmful. Again, I can't say that because I don't know what vulnerabilities people have. Uh, physicians are better equipped to say something about that. Um, but once we started putting chlorine, free chlorine in the system and the free chlorine got out into the system, which was probably by Sunday or so, we would have already started taking care of the toxin and removing the toxin from the distribution uh, water system. Doctor, one of the other thing, one of the things you mentioned today are the steps people can take among them, flushing the system, throwing away ice. Most of them seem to be relatively easy things to do, except changing filters on, on that. And I don't know what the price of filters are, but I've changed filters. Then they can be a little bit more work. Is there any danger if somebody takes all the steps that you recommended but doesn't change the filters? Is there, is there any level of risk involved? Um, based on the advisory, based on the lifting of the advisory, based on what Department of Health has told us and what EPA guidelines say, I would stick to changing those uh, filters also because they may have, if somebody was using that water and they are vulnerable and that water got into the filters, that could be a possible uh, way of, uh, that could be endangering their health. So I would not advise to well, use that. Um, can you talk about whether or not those gaps in between the media advisories and those alerts um, will kind of shorten over time in the next, you know, if there's ever another situation where you have to get communications out? 
We, we will work on that. Uh, again, we will look at uh, uh, communications as, as part of our internal uh, review of, of our processes uh, and, you know, try, try to uh, become more efficient. Um, uh, again, I, I can't overemphasize the fact that the city will be taking advantage of this experience uh, and we'll, we'll try to make some lemonade out of the lemons. The, the lemons are, were what people had to go through over the past week. Uh, very unfortunate. Uh, but we don't want this opportunity uh, not to go, uh, uh, for us to learn lessons and be better next time. Mayor. Um, yes, sir. Question about the, uh, the water. I think it was you that mentioned that it was $63,000. And I, what I'm wondering is, did, does the city, did the city get water donated to it? or? Did it, it bought the, the water for $63,000, the water you distributed? Uh, most of it, right? I yeah. mean, did we get any of the, well, we got some from the county. I yeah, think. so the $63,000 uh, is what we spent on the water that we purchased. We had another 14 pallets that was given to us from Palm Beach County Department of Emergency Management as well. Okay. So the majority, the brunt, uh, 180 or so pallets, 190 or so pallets was, was what we did, we, we purchased. Today, what happens yeah. to any leftover water that the city might have purchased? We actually are going to keep that on in reserve for hurricane season. Hurricane season, of course, started this week as well. So uh, we, we keep that in reserve for our upcoming, if we have to have open another pot after hurricane season, or if, if we have to internally have water because of hurricane season for the employees. Uh, Mayor, I had another question about the uh, Department of uh, Environmental Protection. Yes. Um, did they reach out to you and say, hey, look, you know, you, you pounded on us in the press conference and, and it wasn't us? No, they, they did not reach out to me. How do we find out about that? They, they, they pounded on you? Yeah, <laughs> yeah I, I got a call yesterday from DEP asking me why did we say that uh, DEP was not helping us. And I told them that's what was the information that we got. So I uh, talked to DOH and DEP. And uh, finally, we figured out uh, yeah, that true. it was DOH at state level that wanted to look through some things a little bit more before they would be able to release their lift and lift their advisory. And before we couldn't lift our advisory okay. before they had lifted because that would cause more confusion. Okay. Mayor, where is the $64,000 coming from? Uh, I imagine we got that from our, our, our reserves. Uh, actually, there may have been some reserves in utilities. I'm not sure. Uh, but our uh, city administrator, who was very uh, uh, adept at uh, finding funds uh, when needed in, in emergencies like this, uh, will figure out which bucket to pull it from. I don't know specifically which bucket we pulled it from at this time, but obviously it was money we had to expend. I mean, there was no. Uh, reservation about doing that. Uh, as to the impact on the budget, uh, we, we have sufficient reserves uh, uh, with over six million dollars in, in, in the general fund uh, reserves. So, uh, although we f will fill the sixty-four thousand dollars, it's not fatal. It was sixty-three or sixty-four. Sixty-three. Just, yeah, sixty-three eight. Uh, actually, I got it right here. Exactly. $63,493.84. Okay. okay. So I missed well. $63,000 and some change. Anything else? All right. Well, I, uh, I would like to say, because uh, I couldn't say it yesterday, uh, we are very happy. Uh, we're delighted. And uh, we wish everyone a very good weekend. Thank you.